Some of you might know I've had a really traumatic experience. I can see our room with, with uh, nothing last night. Oh, my God. <laughs> Always start off with a check. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of you might remember that uh, last year we revealed Alice, the Alice computer, that was uh, the x86 laptop, which ran some Windows, Linux, OS4 Classic, and uh, OS uh, Amiga Kit, OS 3.9. Have we bought two of the first uh, laptops to sell today to the show? Unfortunately, <laughs> on the way to Sacramento, I was feeling hungry, so I thought uh, Paul was driving in a high car. And uh, we had bags in the back of the car, and we were looking at the car from the restaurant. And uh, we broke into it, and bags went, laptops went, cash went, my passport went. His Mac went, but that's that's not <laughs> So no Alice. No, that's sad. Come on. Oh. So. <laughs> you see Alice out in the wild. Please let me know. So was the restaurant called the Rabbit Hole? <laughs> White Alice, my original one, which I had last year. Uh, Black one. Oh, nice. Sorry. Somebody stepped on the connector. Oh, oh. Yeah. You didn't take it right the first time. All right. Yeah, we're good. You're good. back on? Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, uh, nice, uh, nice black one. So, if you see Alice, please let me know. Just to let you know, though, this was over the front side of the it was um, hello, no, for you only. For no, for no, for no. Anyway, we're released, originally here today, we are obviously really pleased to announce the official release of the Amiga One X5000. Yeah! It's been a while to get here. Um, the beta test has been great, uh, especially in the last six months. Um, the developers have worked hard to, to put the Amiga OS 4.1 into shape. Um, we've got another advanced uh, pre release of the next Amiga OS 4.1 update. And we'll move on back to Steve, so Steve can fill you in on what we've been doing and where it's going to move uh, on from here. That's Steve Sully, the team leader of uh, Amiga OS 4. So I'm pleased to say we're finally, and if you want to buy one, there's a special one too for us. Available show special, uh, $13.50. Wow. 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 That's the more, okay? Um, what we've been doing over the last year, I think two years ago, I stood up and said content, content, content. <coughs> well, that's what we've been doing, working on content. So, over the last uh, two years, we put a lot of effort into software. It's obviously hardware, we're working on that. New systems coming out. New systems coming out. But uh, uh, the software is, uh, is key to the, uh, the Amiga OS 4 continuing, I think. So we need new applications, we need new programs, new developments. So, um, what we're doing is we're bringing out a, a LE version of the Enhanced Software Pack for the older Amiga ones, uh, Sans, Pegasus. And this does not include the Walk 3D, Nova, or the Rain H2 drivers, because they're not paid on those machines. So they'll obviously be a lower price, but it will contain all of the other uh, software that we'll continue to develop. Uh, we're also working on a um, 68K version. And that's a, been a massive job, because we've had to recreate the, uh, uh, the, react, the reaction classes, the data types. It's not, it's very, a lot of work. Um, but we've got lots of the applications that already run uh, on Enhancer for PowerPC, now run under uh, OS 3.x. And uh, we haven't, everything we do now is committed for both. So anything we produce, we try to produce an OS 3 version. So you'll see the OS 3 version, that was for Robert, you'll see the OS 3 version uh, in the not too distant future. Um, and I can't even read that. <laughs> uh, 
along with the OS3 and the SE version, we're continuing to upgrade and expand the, the standard version, the, uh, the full version. And when we release the classic version, it will all have the, the advances of the, the version 1.2. 1.1 is the one that's out, but 1.2 is on the way. So it's that C1.2, not too far from now. And uh, the commits are coming in, so that's, that's really good news. Just the facts, I think I reported some of these last year. We now have almost 900 Amistor customers who do repeat orders. Uh, we have now almost 3,000 transactions through Amistor. They come in every day. And we have 50 software, well, actually more than 50 software titles, but uh, I know for definite we've got 50. Um, the AmigaDeveloper.com uh, team we, we put together, we now have 22 paid developers working on Amiga OS projects. That's Amiga. <laughs> so that's Amiga OS 3 and Amiga OS 4. The number of live projects is greater than 50. So when people say nothing's happening, tell them it's not true. And the number of SVN commits is now 2,885. And they're growing incrementally. Um, I apologize for this sort of slides, usually there's a lot, usually there's a lot more information and colorful. I had to do these in the, uh, last night and the day before because all my slides and presentations went with my laptops and my backup USB hard disk drive, which also went. Um, Warp 3D Nova is now at version 1.32 and we've got the developer in the room. Hans, can you stand up? Hans Reuter. Uh, it's a massive task he's undertaken, and, it, uh, and Hans, as you know, is the creator of the Radeon HD drivers as well. And, and we've really seen some um, excellent work. The latest version has just been released with a 10% speed increase on the previous version, which was a speed increase on the previous version before that. So it's all coming together nicely. And Daniel Musner is working on the OpenGL ES uh, 2.0. He just released version 1.7, and it's keeping a pace with the developments that Hans is putting into the Warp 3D Nova. So I'm really excited and pleased that these are coming together. So this is a, this is a big uh, uh, bonus for Amiga OS 4. Uh, you might be surprised to know, I've got a beta version of LibreOffice with me. <laughs> I, uh, for OS 4. And Steve later is going to set it up on uh, Val's machine. So hopefully we'll get to see how that runs. Uh, I, I saw it a week ago. It's apparently a number of updates have been done, and it's now usable. So we're about to start the beta testing of that uh, for uh, a small test group. So any volunteers to test that, please send me an email. Oops. It's it. <laughs> A few of these things you'll notice we mentioned maybe a year ago, two years ago. It shows you how long it takes to get things to market. Uh, we mentioned the Prisma Mega Mix card, which is a, a sound card for classic Amigas. It works on the Zorro port, uh, so 2000, 3000, 4000. And the same card works on the clock port for the A1200. So you can use it in a tower. Uh, and you see on the right, I think it's the right. Is it your right? Yes. Uh, you'll see there's a a mounting bracket for the tower, and we also have a, uh, a desktop version. It's in prototype form at the moment, but that's only, uh, yeah, I would say, weeks. So, uh, for classic users, you now have a, a card which will play all of your modern sound and data type, file types, WAV, you, know, you name it, it plays it, without uh, disruption, or, and you can multitask at the same time, on a 7, giga, seven megahertz CPU. So pretty good. Tabor, for those who don't know, I guess most you'll know about Tabor. It's, it's the motherboard behind our, uh, our entry level Amiga One A1222. Uh, I say entry level, but performance is mid level. So entry level price, mid level performance. I like I used car sale, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and uh, I was in the Adelaide uh, Amiga show in Australia about uh, two weeks ago. Uh, I did a side trip from Sydney, I was on business, 
and uh, that's uh, Stephen Jeffrey with his Amiga One X1000 uh, an Alice laptop which sadly is no longer with us the white laptop uh, on the right is a Tabor machine uh, running uh, Linux and I'm pleased to say that I'm looking round for him uh, is, he, is he in the room? Is Christian in the room? And again, oh, they'll be back. Christian Zagotsky uh, is one of the, the drivers behind Linux on the X1000 and the uh, Tabor motherboard. And there you see on the right, Steve running, uh, uh, actually running Amiga OS 3.9 on his, on his um, Tabor motherboard under Linux, under emulation. So as far as power and usability, it's a really good board. The middle picture is actually uh, uh, one of those X500 cases created by the, uh, the Italian developer in the UK. Is it GoDaddy or Daddy? Yeah. And uh, I bought one on the Kickstarter project and it's been stuck at, at Amiga Kit for about a year. And so when I was at Cardiff last week, I said, well, let's just see if it works. So we put the table board, that's it down below, in the, la the bottom picture. We put it in, we put a graphics card in, and we powered it up and we booted it to the footwork. So I was quite impressed, it actually works. An expensive little project, the, um, the, the keyboard, but it's, it's very Amiga 500-like. That's what I think anyway. So I wanted to do a quick presentation today. That's our car. <laughs> we had a smashing time. I hope you're going to have a smashing time. At <laughs> West. It's always great to get back here. Um, I've got, for those who don't know, we always stay in the back room at the front. The back room at the front, isn't that Irish or English? We always stay in the room at the front of the, uh, the hotel. And we usually meet for, for, for beer. Robert good, good all brings his beer. And I've got a nice bottle of malt whiskey tonight. We managed to finish the bottle of uh, whiskey last night. <laughs> uh, a lot of people, Steve. A lot of people. Uh, <laughs> so you're more than welcome to come. You know, late after the banquet tonight, we'll be, we'll be there chatting away. It's always great. It's one of the best parts of MUS for me. You get to talk to people and just you know chill out and share your passion about Amigas. You know, whether it's uh, classic Amiga OS, Morph OS, AROS, emulation, FPGAs. You know, it doesn't matter. You just share your Amiga passion. I'm not going to take questions uh, at the moment. I'm going to pass on to Steve, because Steve can fill in some of the more you know, juicier stuff. I just talk about the hardware, but Steve uh, has the, the difficult task of trying to make it come together with the software. So once Steve's finished his session, we'll take questions. So thank you very much. Sounds like it's working. Alrighty. Hello. <laughs> so uh, I have a, a few talking points here. I have no pretty slides. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> this is kind of a last minute thing I had to throw together. Um, so there, there, I have basically three different things I wanted to mention. First of all, uh, well, who, who am I? I'm Stephen Soley. I'm the Amigo S development team lead at least at the moment, <laughs> and uh, trying to make the Amiga OS run on these wonderful hardware gadgets that <laughs> Aeon's been producing. Um, so the current state of the, of the OS is uh, 4.1 final edition. So that's out there now. Everybody has one, right? Good. <laughs> and what we're going to do is produce an update to that. So the name gets a little long. It's uh, Amigo OS 4.1 Final Edition Update 1. Yeah. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <Hey. 
Uh, hopefully there won't be an update too, but we'll see what happens, right? <laughs> you never know in software. And uh, yes, it's supposed to ship before the end of the year. So that's the promise today. Uh, hopefully even sooner than that. It's, it's currently in release candidate uh, cycling. So we got release candidate, try it out, you know, so. Should, shouldn't be too much longer. It's a free update for registered users. So if you haven't registered with that big, big long serial number, get, get registered. There should be instructions somewhere in the package, I assume. I, I don't know, I don't install it the long way. Uh, <laughs> uh, what else? Oh, among the fixes in there, I, I was supposed to mention the extended memory. I think we finally fixed that so it works properly. So uh, your RAM disk now can grow to, how big can it go? Well, you can put in four, four gigabytes and Amiga OS will use two and then you got two more gigabytes that RAM disk could potentially use. So but what it does is it basically pages because um, the address space is only four gigs. So Amigo S generally uses two only right now. So you don't get a lot of space to use up all your RAM address space. And a lot of people have you know, four gigs or 16 gigabytes of RAM, 18, you know, in, in motherboards these days. So we wanted at least to give some of that back. Um, there's also the X5000. That, well, that's, uh, that's, as I say right there, announcing it. Yes, it's released. So I guess you better get the software finished. Um, <laughs> so the, it's in release candidate testing right now. So obviously it'll be shipping with the 5000s when you start buying them up, right? Two or three per house is good. Uh, <laughs> Also, there, there will be uh, the E1222, which uh, has the code name Taborboard in it. Um, that one currently boots to Workbench, and the developer is, thank you, <laughs> is, is working hard on uh, fixing all the ins and outs to make it more stable for the rest of the team to jump on. Um, so that's, that's good news, that's good news. And uh, that, was, that was all I had to share at this moment. So Trevor, uh, if you want to, Come back up, field questions. It's an X5000 that's running this presentation today, so you know, it shows you that it's pretty stable, works well. Uh, as you'll notice, when you move this, generally, when you move the PDFs, I've noticed on that, on the Amiga, it's quite slow. So it takes a lot faster on the, on the X5000. Yes, yes, yes. Should be. So, anyway, <laughs> any questions for myself and Steve? Don't be shy. Come on. Who is Amiga on the lake? Ah, it's a new US uh, uh, retailer who's, who's actually um, investing quite a lot of money in stock from Aon and Amiga. And he's actually really setting up a, a US based um, uh, retailer. Yeah. Oh, I'll take your mics on. Oh, or, or you don't have a mic. Yeah, well, it's share it. Oh, here we go again. Okay, yeah, so uh, <laughs> if you didn't get that, it's a new uh, US retailer, Amiga Retail. What is your uh, Amiga on the Lake. Where? Where is it? East. East. Somewhere east. east. Yeah. Yeah, it's like upstate New York. It's, it's Oswego, New York. And the uh, principal is Aaron Smith. Really great guy. He's APS Turk on the forums. I'm really looking forward to, most of us are really looking forward to being able to order from someone local here. So, it's great news. Okay, Thank, thanks for that. LD. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've had an experience this before, have you? Sorry, yeah. What was the cost of the machine and the OS? What was the? The price. Of the? Yeah, well, we know we announced the price for the full system starting from sixteen ninety nine pounds sterling. So now's the time to buy because the pound sterling's through the floor. <laughs> That's for the full system. Uh, the boards, the boards for sale. There's two Cyrus boards for sale today, and uh, they're selling a show price at thirteen fifty US dollars for the board. What is the full system configuration? Um, Starts from well, it can be anything you want, of course, but it includes obviously RAM, graphics card, CD-ROM drive, um, hard disk drives, case, that case. Yep. Nice case. 
It is a nice case. I just saw it. Uh, I just saw the case yesterday. You did? Okay. Yes, first time. Uh, you mentioned Alice at the beginning. Yeah, Alice. Um, you said it was for sale. Is that what I heard? Yeah. Well, we were, we bought two laptops. We were bringing two laptops for sale, they're gone. Um, but uh, Ken Lester, who is uh, uh, a key part of the Alice team, uh, there he is. Uh, he might give us an update. Ken, do you have an update? Uh, we're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> what we've done. We, 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 here, yeah. What Trevor left out was that the entire North American stock got stolen out of his car. <laughs> But uh, I think it's fair to say that Ken's going to be the, the, the contact point for North, North American Alice users and, uh, and, and contact support. So uh, I think it's good to have someone in country. And what uh, Ken's doing at the moment is setting up two laptops that we bought yesterday and trying to configure them as a full Alice system. So that means you, you have the option of booting into Windows regularly. Uh, Ami Kit, classic Amiga. Uh, with its rabbit hole feature, so you can run, you can actually run uh, Linux programs on top of uh, uh, AmiKit, uh, or run Linux by itself if you want. Uh, but uh, and uh, Amiga OS 4 Classic, uh, so you can either boot into either one of them, and it just feels like you're using the native operating system. It doesn't feel like you've got a lot of um, um, emulation overhead. So it's being sold as a hardware software package. It's a hardware software package at the moment. Uh, Ken and the team are, are trying to work out how they might produce something which people could take on a USB stick and uh, it's a difficult one but we're working on solutions for that. But at the moment it's a full system. Uh, and uh, no Robert wants one. So I think Robert's going to be one of the first purchases, am I right Robert? Yes. So if we get one working today... <laughs> 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 Yes, LD. Uh, what are the specifications for the uh, Alice laptop and what is the intended uh, price? Uh, well, uh, the specifications, <laughs> trouble with laptops, and you'll know it yourself, from one model to the next, they change completely. And even the same models from different batches change completely. So uh, I'm going to let, I'm going to chicken out here and let Ken tell you what we, our recommended specifications are. Ken. Um, well, the machines, the machines that uh, we have been using yeah. have all been i5 can't, machines. can't go off because like, it's broadcast. Join <laughs> us. <laughs> We're all friends here. <laughs> this, 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 is, this is Ken Lester, and he's going to talk about the Alice laptop. Alice is a, is a, is a name for a laptop incorporating a classic experience. Alice. You know, or an Amiga laptop. <laughs> no, I mean a laptop. Um, the machines we've been using have been i5s. Um, it pretty much it'll run on any any Intel processor within reason. Um, but the i5 is a nice compromise between price and, and performance. Uh, Trevor's laptop was actually an i3, so we tried that out, and uh, and I tried it on uh, the the system on an i7 desktop system or machine, and it, it works very nice. Machines that we have upstairs we're working on right now are i5 sixth generation um, um, processors. They have four gigs of RAM. Uh, it's all 32-bit OSs, so uh, four gigs of RAM um, and uh, 16 by 9 displays, which are 1366 by 768. Uh, one terabyte uh, uh, hard disks. Uh, these have built-in CD-ROMs. The the old the Acers we had last year did not. Um, so if you if you like CD-ROMs, if you're, you know, they have, they have them, uh, or th this particular batch has them. But as Trevor said, you know, it's like we're really, really struggling with these things change constantly, and so we have to come up with a way to be able to, so that every machine isn't isn't a custom one-off, you know, that we have to support. Um, and we've made a lot of progress. Uh, a good year. I, I should say that the machines come with an OS4 Classic license, so that they're fully um, supported and they also come with a Mega Forever license so we get the the ROM images and other files that are needed for the classic and oh and and we have a an MUI license as well uh, which is included so uh, it's quite nice that we got uh, and that was from the developer of MUI he provided that so um, to everyone out there Steven himself 
get permission. Yes, yeah, Steve. Yeah, yeah, the the developer. Yeah, the Steve. No, the actual developer gave permission for the. That's the one. Yeah. So that was really good. And we, we sent some money for his cycling beer fund. That that was it. That's all he wanted. Yeah. So um, so it's been a it's been a long one. This, but it's I took my my white Alice laptop everywhere with me, and I used to like running uh, uh, Skype conversations, oh, in Ami Kit. Well, that's what it looked like. Uh, so it was always good fun. Thanks very much. I didn't cover the price. Um, we're trying to work out the price. If we would charge the real price for the work that we put into it, Ken, Pat, Jan, myself, it would be a stupid price. So we're trying to come up with a price which is fair for the, to, so we can repay. We've got to pay for the licenses, of course. So it's a full OS4 classic license, which, which are paid for. So that's got to be paid. The, uh, the Make a Forever license, which is a bit less, has to be paid for. Uh, and of course, uh, our beer fund has to be paid for. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that is expensive. It is, yeah. <laughs> but but if, we, if we say the laptop, you know, cost price is $450 for the basic laptop, then I think it will at least see a couple hundred dollars on top of that. And that covers all the licenses uh, and, and allows us to, to pay the various developers a little bit of money for each. So that's $300 grand. Oh, $600 US. How is that $650 US? Which is actually less than what we said last year, if you remember. Quite considerably less. I don't remember what the price was. 800 I think. We, had, we got you up to 900 and you started to balk at 900 no. <laughs> He was our litmus test. <laughs> so, 650 is, uh, and then of course if we go for a bigger better spec laptop, that'll put the price up. That's what I'm thinking at the moment. So don't hold me to it, but uh, I think that would be, be fair. Yes. What are some of the limitations that uh, close encounter customers will experience with the X5000 that will be taken care of over time? Okay. Well, you know, Steve mentioned the uh, the update one, the final edition. This is a this is actually the update one version that's right. actually on. So, so we get the late the latest Amiga OS. But of course, this is a why it's called close encounters. It's a it's our first. Uh, close encounters with the customers, not just beta testers. So um, it, it will. Uh, it comes with obviously a sound card, but there's no there's no onboard sound, so that's fine. It comes with an Ethernet card. There is onboard Ethernet, which works fine on Linux, as you might imagine, uh, but it works fine on on the on the Ethernet card. It also um, what else do we need? Obviously, multi-core support. You didn't mention multi-core support. Perhaps you'd like to say something about that? I did. So, um, yeah, the, the, the team is currently focused on shipping products. So, of course, the multi-core support has been slightly deferred until uh, the X5000 and the 1222 actually ship, uh, as far as I know. So, um, yeah. I, the, the, the last I heard, Steve, was that uh, the focus then will be on multi-core. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, multi-core is, is number one because, I mean, you have two cores, you kind of want to use them, so it's, you don't want to leave any hardware doing nothing. That's the goal. So in terms of um, the release, I would say this has uh, actually got better support than the X1000 did when it came out. So it, it, it's, it's very stable. Uh, we've got some beta testers in the room, um, trying to look at them that are using them. Well, oh, you've got your ILD. Yeah, but you use yours for, for work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. Probably more performance that are going to be yes, ongoing, there are. There are, yeah. Yeah, go yeah, on. Uh, yeah that reminds me. Uh, we do have an X1000 and an X5000 and uh, Amiga 1500 over at the uh, Hyperion table. So you could try it out. So there you go. You can see how stable it is right now. Any more questions? So, congratulations. Okay, um, with Alice, uh, what I suggest you do is sit down with Ken later, 
Uh, he can give you, a, a, I mean, obviously it's emulation, but we've, we've built it, uh, Ken and the team have built it, so it feels like you're actually running the software natively. You don't, you don't, yeah, you do not feel like you're running under emulation. Whereas if you use Omega Forever on a PC, you're using a PC, it feels like a PC. Uh, we always wanted, and I always wanted, uh, and the yarn of AmiKit always wanted, effectively an AmiKit laptop, an AmiKit computer, and that's what it is. Wouldn't you say that's a fair co comment? Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, for those who didn't hear, Ken said yes, because he would say that, because I paid him earlier. Right. I'll do the printer question. Uh, I can do a printer question if you want as well. Oh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> we have someone starting to work on Gutenprint. We have all the source code that was produced by one of the previous developers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, is he in the room? Is he in the room? Where's Tony? There he is. Tony has, has I think, agreed to take up the challenge. Am I right, Tony? Yes, Tony's here. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you know differently. I know not differently. <laughs> So yeah, so that so that um, that's a, a big project. A lot of work was done on on Guten Print by um, Timothy Dieters, uh, his developers, and he and he graciously gave us the source code, and said, "Look, if you can make it go further, please take it." So we did. And can can uh, Christian? Can you stand up, please? I mentioned Christian earlier. He is one of the uh, key members of the core Linux team that supports uh, Amiga One X One Thousand and the Table motherboard. He's, he's done wonders with table motherboard. Actually, yeah. Uh, this is his first Ami West. He's come all the way from Germany. Um, uh, so make him feel welcome. He's a great guy, and without him, we would be so far behind on the, the Linux side. Mm -hmm. Thank you. LD. I'm, you're probably not ready, but. Can you give any more guidance on the anticipated price of the A1222? Ah, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my foot in my mouth, right? Go for it. Is Matthew listening? No, so you're okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I want to make. I said it before. I want to make it the lowest cost next generation Amiga round. A low. I said it earlier. The lowest cost, uh, mid-level performance, lowest price, and. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to say it anyway. He'll, he'll only complain afterwards. We're probably going to sell it at cost. So we're talking about a price that's, you know, uh, under 400 euros. Does everybody hear that? Wow. Okay. <laughs> under 400 euros. So, uh, so it means we take, we obviously, we, we take a bath on it, but of course, we're going to be printer suppliers. We're going to sell you printer inks, software. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so if, my theory is, if we get more hardware out there, get more users, they'll buy more software, and then we'll keep it, and we can become self-supporting. Our community becomes self-supporting. You know, we don't have these big lulls of nothing happening. So that's the idea. Anyone else? Of course, that's at the current pound price. <laughs> if the pound doubles in price, well, no, I'm just joking. One more question. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the questions, and hopefully uh, we'll have a great show. Uh, I'm, I'm quite impressed. Last night we had a really good you know, group. Oh, yes. I and mean, I don't think I've seen that on a Friday night after the no, classics. No, oh, we didn't so even great. start yet. <laughs> no, no. So... Uh, Let's hope we continue with the show and really enjoy ourselves. Thanks very much. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, Steve. Uh, and thanks for uh, Ken for you a little bit there. Uh, that's great. We're hopefully going to hear more from Ken later. Uh, we are going to have lunch break at this point. We were going to attempt to provide lunch, but our provider uh, became unavailable due to a family emergency yesterday. And so we have family member dying. So uh, everybody's on their own for lunch. And uh, we'll see you back here probably, what time is it now, noon? 12.08. 12.08, okay, probably back here about 1.30.
Uh, and at that point, Tony Wyatt. Tony, are you here? There you are. Tony Wyatt will be presenting Next Generation Amiga File Systems. So uh, that's what's going on at 1.30. Thanks so much for coming, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all back here at 1.30.